Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Story Of. This time we're going to be talking about Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake. My voice may be a little weird in this one because I've been battling a cold for a month. <laughs> Metal Gear 2 takes place in 1999, four years after the events of Outer Heaven and around six years before the Shadow Moses incident. Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake was released in Japan for the MSX2 on July 20th, 1990 my birth year. After Metal Gear did so well in the West on the NES, Konami went forward with creating the sequel, specifically with the West in mind, without Kojima, a game called Snake's Revenge. Kojima, unaware they were making a sequel, ended up running into someone on the dev team who told Kojima he should make a sequel himself. So Kojima went to Konami with his new story and got the go-ahead, and that is how Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake came to be. In 2004, Metal Gear 2 was re-released in Japan for mobile with some key differences. The coded character designs that were originally modeled after some very familiar faces were now redrawn by none other than Yoji Shinkawa, and certain names were changed and play mechanics were improved. I'll be showcasing this version of the game because the text is more digestible and who wouldn't want to enjoy some Shinkawa artwork? Metal Gear 2 is packed with new gameplay features and more of a focus on storytelling. Some of these new features include the radar, alert phases, and improved guard design. For example, the guards have a wider line of sight, they have the ability to follow you from room to room, and they are able to hear the player. Let's get into it. It is the late 1990s and the world is coming to peace. Conflicts have thawed and the threat of nuclear war is a thing of the past, but there are some who do not desire peace. Military junta comes to power in Zanzibar land, a small nation in Asia. Zanzibar land forces attack nuclear weapon disposal facilities and sees weapons still intact and becomes the world's sole nuclear power and begins invading its neighbors. Simultaneously, suddenly the world's oil supply dries up, resulting in an energy crisis. A Czech biologist named Dr. Kio Mar creates Oilix, a microbe that synthesizes petroleum. Energy crisis solved. On his way to an American scientific conference, Dr. Marv is kidnapped by Zanzibar Land agents. With the nuclear weapons they've taken and Oilix, Zanzibar Land can achieve global military domination. After the events of Metal Gear four years ago, Solid Snake is pulled out of retirement by Foxhound's new commander, Roy Campbell. Snake is tasked with rescuing Dr. Marv and ensuring Oilix doesn't fall into the hands of Zanzibar leaders. Here we go. Solid Snake free climbs to his infiltration point. Campbell informs us that we're not only equipped with cigarettes this time, but also with a sensor. Our first radar system. Dr. Marv has a transmitter implanted in one of his molars and can be found as a red dot on our map. Campbell also says if we need any additional help, we can call our old survival master, McDonald Miller. Snake begins his journey sneaking through the base and we're introduced to our new crawling feature. Upon reaching the fortress gates, Campbell calls suggesting that we use the building's vents to get in. Familiar! <laughs> ah, crawling through the vents, it's got some great music. Entering the facility, the first thing we see are two tanks. Do I even say anything? And we receive a call from a Holly White. That bandana though. She's a CIA operative who infiltrated Zanzibar land about a month ago, posing as a journalist. If we need info about the fortress, we can give her a ring. The base is full of guards, and as I touched on earlier, they can hear you this time, so Snake can be heard on certain surfaces. As we make our way to the elevators, you can grab some items as everything is OSP. Passing through lasers and guards with a new ability to go turn off a light on us, we make sure to pick up the gas mask for the flashing red rooms because there's no big boss to remind us of gas this time. Finally, we come to a room with a person in a lab coat. He laughs, foolish foxhound. This knockoff Marv mocks our cheap transmitter and transforms into Black Ninja, a former member of NASA's Extraterrestrial Environment Special Forces Unit. He teleports through the room and it's battle time. And honestly, his outfit is giving me old school Catwoman vibes. Just me? Snake downs him, literally. He's Kyle Schneider. Snake is surprised and Schneider reveals he was almost killed by our country. I can literally hear it hater's voice right now. Schneider explains that NATO launched the bombing of Outer Heaven, with all the resistance fighters and children of Outer Heaven still inside. Black Ninja reminds us that many of the children were war orphans and NATO didn't really want to deal with them so they got rid of them. Snake is bummed. And Snyder speaks of him, the man who came and saved them from annihilation, gave them a new land, home, and family. Snake starts piecing it together, but Snyder stays ominous. He then says he owes Snake a debt and he'll tell us where Dr. Marv is. Bitch, you were just pretending to be him, but okay. He tells us to find a man with a green beret on the first floor. He's guarding the cell and if we follow him, he'll lead us to Marv. Boom, he dies. Explode. And we consume his life? 
side note, you can fast travel through a dust chute, that slide whistle though, all the way to the garbage, which is, you know, in the sewers. And like all bad guy fortresses, we can locate the armory and pick up weapons and ammunition, like plastic explosives and a submachine gun. Back on the first floor, we locate the guard with the green beret and begin tailing him, which leads us to an outdoor area. And a pretty tedious tailing mission. But finally, he leads us to a building and no one's there. Only the sound of knocking. It's a code. A code at code. Snake punches in the numbers and Dr. Petrovich Madnar? Snake is shocked. <laughs> Madnar explains he knew Marv from Academy and that they were captured while traveling together in America. He also explains that they moved Marv to the tower building to the north. Damn it. And Madnar asks Snake why he thinks they've kept him alive this long, because they must need something. Yup, it's Metal Gear and it's here in Zanzibar land. They've already completed a new Metal Gear and the one we destroyed was just a prototype. They also want to produce a light version for mass production. Yikes. When Madnar asks who Snake thinks must be behind it, he responds, Big Boss. Madnar's like, yeah, Marvel probably cave soon, so we should probably hurry. He tells us they both had microtransmitters given to them by a female agent from the STB, which is basically a Czech secret police. Madnar tells Snake, ah, just leave me here, I'm safe, but go get Marv. He then starts talking about his daughter Ellen, who's a fan of ours, Ellen, and she's not married yet, and then instantly changes the subject to a zoologist friend of his. What? Johan Jacobson. Okay, cool. And back to the brush. Snake comes across an open field and a mysterious person calls us to warn us that we're in a minefield. They're our number one fan. Flashbacks. Flash forwards? We get through the minefield, the sand squeaks, and we come across another hind. Metal Gear just loves its hinds. This one takes to the sky and we only see its shadow shooting us from above and our only option is to hide in a cubbyhole or run away. We find a kid who tells us about a bottomless swamp but he swears he saw a truck drive through it. And just FYI, the kids in this game have no filter and they will spill their guts about this entire place. <laughs> Snake crosses the swamp until we come across another building and some dude comes running at us and he's lovingly known as Running Man. He runs around and starts panting and he tells us a nerve gas is gonna hit us unless we beat him in time. He explodes, we consume, and we get another card. Back inside the base, you can find the Stinger missile, RC missile from the armory, and oh, there's trapdoor floors <laughs> again. Using the Stinger, we can now destroy the hind. And moving on, we come across another big door and Campbell tells us he's changing the frequency and that we can find it on the software manual, very much like Merrill. And he says if we need any help, we can talk to a mercenary expert, George Castler. A cardboard box. Like in the future games, you can disguise yourself as a box and jump on conveyor belts and trucks for quick transport. Once inside, we get a call from Holly. She says they found her out and now she's a prisoner, but she doesn't know where she's being held because she was blindfolded. She assumes it's in the tower building and gives us some clues. She can hear an elevator to the left, a pump to the right, and in front and behind her, there's water. Puzzle, puzzle. Sneaking through, we see more kids, and one says that the one-eyed man said to tell him if they saw someone wearing green, basically us. <laughs> Time to punch walls again like the good old times. We blow the wall up with a plastic explosive and we find Holly. Snake pulls the, I didn't think you'd be this pretty line. Always a flirt. Holly says Dr. Marv sent a carrier pigeon, but the pigeon flew up the elevator, of course, in the tower building. So now it's a race to find this pigeon. Instead of coming with us, she claims she'd only get in our way and gives us a key card and more flirting. Ay. More hidden passageways, some kids talking about a green pineapple. The one-eyed man is like our daddy. This is so depressing. <laughs> ah, green pineapples. As we move through the tower, we come across a booby trap, Bread Blaster. He's climbing up on the ledges and starts grenading us, but two can play at that game. When we get to the bird room, we are greeted with lovely bird music. <laughs> Let's find that stupid goddamn pigeon. You can call Jacobson, which is a terrifying man who reminds me of hot cold men, and he suggests we use some beans or potatoes as bait. However you get there, catch that pigeon. It says help and some sort of code with just an H lowercase. What could it mean? You can call Master Miller, cool sunglasses, and realize it's a digital number. And we make the call on the codec, only to realize we don't speak the same language. So Madnar suggests we give a Gustava a call because she can translate. The STB woman who was protecting them. She stole an enemy uniform and is the only woman who'd be in uniform on the base. Maybe we should meet somewhere only she can meet in the women's restroom. Does this sound familiar? Off we go back to Kids tell us about the soldier mannequins, they're very creepy, also MGS5 vibes, and we have to be careful because there are 
guards, of course, hiding among them. Eventually, we come across a mess hall with bathrooms. Snake hides until he sees someone go into the women's restroom. Gustava is giving me Naomi vibes in this picture. Snake says, do I know you from somewhere? The Olympics? What? She brushes him off and talks to Marv. He's safe for now. There's a large crevice to the north of the building and the prison is on the other side. And he says that he's worried about Madnar. Gustava says we can take an old sewer as a shortcut. And what a cool women's restroom that it has its own elevator. Don't worry, she's fallproof. I don't know what the hell this thing is, but avoid it. More elevators and we find Madnar. He gives us a card and joins our group. After walking for a bit, Madnar says he has to rest a little. And as they're about to rest, suddenly Madnar has business to attend to. So Snake and Gustava sit down. Gustava says that's odd, but Snake chalks it up to him being old. She admits she is an Olympic ice skater. Snake talks about fate. She tells us about her mother being haunted by war and they start to connect. She asks if we're married but we say I have no family. She talks about a former lover, Frank Hunter, who was a western man, but she was rejected to enter the west and they were outcast. She never saw him again. Ah, Mr. Madnar is back from his business and Snake is suspicious. We continue out of the sewer until we come across a bridge. It could only hold one person at a time. Madnar volunteers to go first because he's old and no one will care if he falls. <laughs> Gustava goes next and turns around to tell Snake it's safe when boom, the bridge is blown to bits. Gustava! She gives us her sob story about how she knew she couldn't do it. Snake tells her not to give up, but she knows she's beyond saving. Sad. She gives us her key card and a brooch and says, Frank. Snake yells to Madnar as he's taken away by soldiers. And then suddenly, Metal Gear appears. It's Gray Fox. He's taking Madnar and tells Snake to go home, but Snake says no, obviously. <laughs> and we leave Gustava's body. Holly calls about a veranda and suggests we can use a hang glider, backtracking time. This game also has a lot of fun secrets that I haven't even touched upon, like you can play the national anthem and the guards will stop, or you can catch a cold like in the future games, but maybe I'll get into that more later. Snake locates the hang glider. While heading back to the elevator, we get a call from Gray Fox telling us we should have listened and now we're going to die. An assassination team is coming from the elevator ceiling. Familiar. Snake kills them all, we get our key card. Now we're going back to the staircase, running up a bunch of flights of stairs as guards follow us. We locate the veranda and get a call from our fan telling us only to jump when the wind blows north. Snake hang glides like a baller off the veranda, very epic, to be on the bridge. Uh oh, battle music. It's jungle evil. I've been waiting for you, Snake. He attacks Snake by popping in and out of the brush. And of course, Snake defeats him and we get his key card. There's a new building which looks like a lab and you can locate some eggs. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, you notice there's a snake in your inventory because the eggs have hatched. So now we need to let it go. In this new area, we come across a gate with a sensor. And one of these kids just snitches immediately and tells us, hey, they turn off the power at night. That's the perfect way to stop intruders. Now, while it never becomes night in this game, you can find an owl egg. And they turn the power off and we find a bunch of buildings with kids. Eesh. As we head toward the basement, we receive a call from our number one fan again, warning us about Night Fright, the last surviving member of The Whispers, a legendary gorilla unit. He's wearing camo, making him invisible to the naked eye, and he's armed with a silent gun. So he tells Snake to use your ears, aka listen for footsteps. Honestly, he sounds like Sonic to me. <laughs> He dies. Snake happens across these orange spots on the floor, which is sulfuric acid. Apparently, you can use chocolate to neutralize it from a ration, of course. Yay, chocolate. But we make it over there and we don't have the right card. And our admirer calls us back and tells us we can get it from Jungle Evil. We were like, we already got it. And he's like, no, there must be another one. So now it's time to backtrack and you can find it in the brush. Again, we go. Inside this room, we find a doctor in a bed and Madnar? He tells us it's too late, Marv has already passed, and Snake goes over to his body, commenting on a bruise on his neck. Madnar's like, eh, don't worry about that. Anyways, Marv had a backup of his oil leaks plan hidden in a microfilm in the circuit board of a game cartridge, a MSX cartridge made by Konami. Oh, the fourth wall. He says it's in the locker and Snake asks, okay, then where's the key? And Madnar slips up. At the same time, we receive a call from Holly about him. She had the agency check him out. She was suspicious. He was called a madman after Outer Heaven and wanted to get back at the scientific community. 
for ostracizing him. Zanzibar Land had him become a double agent. Dr. Madnar told them how to get to Marv, and he was after Oilix the entire time. Well, I guess he knows the jig is up. He gives us his sob story and says he just wanted to continue Metal Gear, and Madnar admits, yeah, I killed Marv, shocker, shocker, because Marv wouldn't share the secret. And yeah, it was him who killed Gustava. He knows Gustava gave us the key to the locker and starts choking us out. This old man is freaking strong, and it takes Snake multiple RC missiles to get this motherfucker off. He's down for now. Campbell explains that Gustavus brooch is made of memory alloy and we should try changing the temperature. Back to the mess hall, into the fridge, and we see the brooch turn into a key. All right, here we go again. Back. We unlock the locker and inside is a crawl space with rats? No, poisonous hamsters. Jacobson suggests we use cheese to bait them and yikes, we become exterminators. With the hamsters gone, we can get the cartridge. Back in the room, Manar begins talking to us saying he'll never let you get away, saying he will use Metal Gear. However, he has one gift for Ellen. He'll tell us how to destroy it. He explains that the armor is the thinnest on the legs of Metal Gear and to use grenades on it. Suddenly, the floor drops out from under us and we go down to shoot. Oh Lord. Gray Fox begins speaking to us, saying there's no way to destroy Metal Gear. And we find ourselves in an area with some rooms with items, which is never a good sign. <laughs> Going through the door, we hear loud stomping sounds and it's Metal Gear, manned by Gray Fox. Dodging missiles and gunfire, we follow what Madnar recommended until Metal Gear starts to explode. Explode. Suddenly, we find ourselves alone in a room with Gray Fox, saying the cartridge is his and to burn in hell. And we are. We are literally on fire during this conversation. And Gray Fox runs. Campbell calls to let us know we're on fire. Thanks for letting us know. And to throw all of our items away. And we meet face to face again with Gray Fox in a minefield. When I first heard minefield in Metal Gear Solid, this was not what I pictured, to be honest. Gray Fox says he's been waiting for this moment for a long time. Snake wants to beat some sense into him, and a fight ensues. Castler tells us about Frank Jaeger. He explains that he used to know him as Hunter Jaeger in German, and that some woman was involved with him, that they wouldn't let her join him in the West, and that's why he started hating the Politicos. As if Snake really had to ask. Yes, it's Gustava. We fight with Fox until he falls, and he says it's finally time for him to give up the title of Fox. Snake asks why. Big Boss saved him from living hell like the children here. And he says he hates war and fighting, but it's all they know and that they need battle to survive. I was born on the battlefield and I'll die on the battlefield. He tells Snake to fight hard and don't let your fans down. It was you! Snake tells him Gustava is waiting for him on the other side. He thanks Snake and explodes, leaving the cartridge. Suddenly, someone says, over here, Snake. Oh Lord, it's Big Boss. You're alive? He says how Snake only craves war above all, and that he gave us a reason to live. He talks about the children's soldiers, how conflict never ends, and nor their purpose. You and I are doomed to remain here until we die like dogs on the battlefield. Snake wants to free himself from the nightmares of Big Boss. Whoever wins has to live their lives out as a soldier. Snake tries to say he loves life. Big Boss is like, well, you have no weapons, so what the hell are you going to do about it? And Snake gives us some very inspirational never giving up quotes from Big Boss himself. Their final battle commences. Since you don't have any items, there's things you can acquire throughout the area, and it's kind of like a puzzle with getting key cards that open up certain rooms, but basically you need to find the two key items, a lighter and a can of spray. Using your self-made blowtorch, you defeat Big Boss. Sneak. It's not over yet. Big Boss burns and explodes. Upon leaving, we are surprised by a guard, but it's Holly. Her uniform was too tight in the chest. <laughs> She gives us a gun, because it's hard for a woman to use. Snake, what the f- He calls Charlie the pilot, and he calls Holly cute. So now we gotta run to the rendezvous point, facing guards along the way. The music's intense, but we arrive, and the pilot is not there. Charlie's like, okay, okay, I'm coming, I'm close. So Snake has to fight off the guards, and Holly does nothing because she doesn't have a gun. And Snake runs out of ammo. They're surrounded, not looking good, when suddenly all the guards are shot. The choppers arrived, good old Charlie. Lovebirds. We get to experience some awesome chopper cinematic flying into the sunset. And the credits begin with the beautiful music. And there is an end credit codec call between Campbell and Snake. He asks if Snake wants to come back to the unit. And Snake's like, nah, my nightmares are gone. I'm a free man now. They open the cartridge and put it in the MSX. And they see nothing, even though Snake proves it's Marv's. His signature is on it, written backwards. <laughs> Smart. He left the game that'll change the world. And then they start talking and they realize Snake left. <laughs> Snake! 
He promised Holly dinner too. Oh, Snake. And more credits. And that is Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. So now that I'm done with all the games in canon for Metal Gear, I think I want to create a video on how Metal Gear 1 and 2 were really the backbone for the entire series. There's so many callbacks. Obviously, Metal Gear Solid is full of so many things from the first two games, almost verbatim in certain parts, like the bathroom thing, that I kind of want to make a video based on uh, the similarities of that and a lot of the quotes and things that lived on even through MGS5. I'm sad my the story of Metal Gear is over, but um, I have plenty of other games I love that I want to do. So like I'd like to do more story of Tomb Raider, the story of Silent Hill, the story of Resident Evil, because so many of these games are being remade and remastered that I think it'd be easy for people that want to see what's different. My voice is completely shot now. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.